are back on Summit Sunrise. This is so much fun. I'm here with Erin Young from the Red Buffalo Cafe. Welcome, good morning. Thank you. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing? It's wonderful, Adam. I'm doing great. Um, I'm so glad to have you here because we get to be in our kitchen. This is yes. one of my favorite parts of TV8 over here, and we're gonna do a demonstration today. We are, so a couple weeks ago, we showed you some of the good techniques for how to do a French press at home. And today okay. we're gonna go through the process of a pour over. I brought uh, my own Chemex from home today. Okay. There's lots of different types of pour over coffee. There's okay. Chemex, mm -hmm. there are um, the V60, which looks like the little V thing that sits on top of your uh, individual cup. Oh, okay, I so see. So those mm -hmm. are all pour over methods. And mm -hmm. the method for us is gonna stay pretty similar. There'll be a couple of variances depending on which one of those pour over methods you're gonna use. Okay. Today we're going with our Chemex style pour over. Yes. Now, rule number one for a good coffee at home, fresh roasted coffee, ground before, right before you use it. So don't buy pre-ground coffee. Try not to. If you don't have a grinder at home, mm -hmm. I really recommend buying one if you have the counter space or buy in smaller increments from your local coffee shops and oh. have us ground like a quarter of a pound. And quarter right, of a pound. so and at Red Buffalo, folks can come in, they can buy the beans from you and yes. you have that capability. We you can, can grind them. Yes. I just recommend smaller increments if you don't have a grinder at home. Okay, and I that's because it keeps it fresher? It keeps it fresher, mm -hmm. it keeps all the, um, there's lots of gas in coffee and it keeps That's it all really funny. fresh. If you ground it too early and you don't use it, mm -hmm. it's like drinking a flat beer. Oh, no one, no really one wants likes that. No. I mean, you can still get the effect, but it's not. It's not gonna do what, no. no. I so I already ground this. And so okay. for our Chemex style, we ground pretty coarse, similar to a, almost a French press. Okay. And because when we went over last week, we said, well, for my French press, I like a 15 to one ratio of coffee to mm -hmm. Oh, I can smell water it, it smells really good. This is our new Colombian that we've been carrying. Ooh, ooh. This one's it's really nice, it's got a malty chocolatey flavor. It smells delicious. I it wish is. that we had smell vision <laughs> And then for me, for my Chemex, I like to do about a 25 to one ratio. Okay. Um, and these are all things you can play with at home, get to know your coffee, get to know your taste. If I have a different roast, mm -hmm. I might use a different uh, ratio of water oh, to coffee. That's good to know. And we might add here too that you have this on a scale as well. I do have this mm -hmm. on a scale. A lot of people don't use a scale at home. I recommend you starting going that way because volume does not equal weight. Volume does not equal weight. That but is a very true fact. Very roughly, mm -hmm. a tablespoon mm -hmm. has seven grams of coffee. Very roughly. Wow. Okay. Lighter roasts are denser than darker roasts. Mm -hmm. So a darker roast is going to weigh less. And this is why you want to go to Red Buffalo. But a scale Aaron helps you in, out with that. Aaron's a master at all yeah. of this. So I'm going to make us two portions here, and I've okay. scoped this out to about 30 grams here. And I'm going to bring okay. all my water weight up to about um, 600 here okay. for us. And the first part is, and I use my nice gooseneck mm -hmm. um, kettle here. Mm -hmm. For about the first 30 seconds, I'm okay. just going to get all my grounds wet. And I'm gonna let this sit now for about 30 seconds. And you can, when you can look over, you see all this gas yeah, coming yeah, up? This is called blooming. This is the blooming phase. You really want oh. this to happen so you don't submerge all of your carbon dioxide into the coffee. You want it to actually come out and escape. And this is where you get those really nice aromas. Yeah, I mean, it smells delicious. Again, yes. I wish we had smell of it. That would we be very not, nice. But it's beautiful. And like, the, it almost looks like, it almost is like, uh, it reminds me of yeast. Yes. Kind of, you know, when you when you have um, bread dough and it, 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 and it bubbles up mm -hmm. a little bit. So you want to do that for about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. And then we're going to bring this up to our desired, for us, weight. You can do an equation where one ounce mm -hmm. of water mm -hmm. equals 30 milliliters or 30 grams. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to bring us up to 600 grams of water. Okay. In other words, that, does, that sounds fancy and complicated. I'm using here about 20 ounces of water. 20 ounces of water. Okay, that is that's good to know because you kind of lose me when it comes yeah, to numbers. Yeah, because we're in the United <laughs> States and we deal with the, you know the, our right. own fun system of numbers. Right. Okay. But it is easy once you just learn those conversions. This is beautiful. I love it, and it makes such a nice brew, and it makes the whole house smell good. And when it, I need my car to smell good, I buy coffee, and mm -hmm. then I just let it sit in my car for like a day. <laughs> That's a good idea. I if understand that. If your ski bag smells or your ski boots smell, put them in like a clean coffee and a clean sock and put them in your ski boots. That is a great tip. See, not only are you and coffee And your husband will never day. know <laughs> that you are offended by the smell of his boots. <laughs> that sounds like you're speaking from experience. Most husband's friend. Oh, husband's his friend. boots wasn't allowed in the car anymore. Oh, I understand. Okay, well, so you can see this is brewing beautifully. It's going to brew. This is our amazing. time is going to be about four minutes here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, which is just, it's beautiful, it's fun. And like I said, we, we have a bee over at the Red Buffalo Cafe that you can right. come and we can sell those for you. Okay. Same type of pour over, uh, just different 
variation on the method there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about Red Buffalo. Where exactly are you located? We're 358 Blue River Parkway in mm -hmm. Silverthorne. So that's just a quarter mile north of the I-70 Silverthorne Interstate exit. Mm -hmm. You're going to the factory stores, you're yep. going to the rec center, mm -hmm. the Summit Stage transfer station for Silverthorne. Mm -hmm. It's all so central it's right, right there. there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of kind of town, it's the town of Silverthorne's uh, it's center. It's a little hub right it there. It is. It is the town center. So hub. be sure to stop by, say hello yes. to Erin and her friendly staff over there. They do a great job. Gotta love local coffee shops. Thank you. Hub for the community. Yes. And you can check out more on redbuffalocafe.com. Absolutely. Or you can come on in. We're open 630 to 530, seven days a week. And she makes really good espresso too. Yes. So she's got you covered. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere.